Hello guys, it's Patro TV. I'm making a full guide on everything regarding Chia Wallet. This is from beginning to the end. I recommend you watching the full video, but if you want to skip ahead, feel free. Uh, if you can share it to your friends who are struggling setting it up or have problems, please do. Um, sharing can help others. I'm gonna share everything that I know. Most of the information uh, may, may be very accurate. Uh, some of the information you might already know and some of the information I might got wrong. But the main purpose is to explain to you why, why I have made these choices for the setup and why it works that way for me and how can you benefit and how can you inform others by using this information so just stick around and have a listen see what i'm doing and basically enjoy the free video that has all of the information about it pretty much so and lastly before i forget if you could subscribe then it would mean a lot to me we have been exploding like crazy with subscriptions in like a few days i just got 200 subscriptions thank you very much for those who subscribed and left a like it helps me a lot to grow my channel i'm aiming to get thousand subscribers uh, nevertheless uh, let's just uh, focus so first i've covered the intro so what do you need to, to start plotting um so for to start plotting you need a hard drive and it's just pretty much hard drive you can get a, a one terabyte hard drive two terabyte hard drive uh you could get an ssd you and pretty much you just need a computer pretty much you could make a mining computer but you just could use old computer so i am going to talk about all of the this in one video without cutting editing because i don't want to go through just a very time consuming and i'm just a person that just shares information so for if you want to skip ahead you can do i'm gonna be highlighting things on a word so first of all how much should you invest well the thing is you should not spend all of your money on mining. You should only spend what you can afford to lose. Of course, you can sell the equipment later, but you won't get the money back that you invested originally. So just bear that in mind that don't spend too much. If you know what feels right for you, just make sure like if you have other priorities like bills or family to take care of, just prioritize that over mining uh, just uh, focus and think how much 10% of your let's say monthly income you can put into this or you already have something saved up don't put all of your savings and then turns out it fails you lost all of your savings maybe put like some of it I mean it really comes down to your personal situation and that's how you should think about it Think logically, don't just think emotionally, don't get hyped up. So, yes, the second stage, can you use an old PC? You can all use an old PC, it won't be very efficient, but you can use an old PC uh, for, for mining Chia, plotting. Uh, it won't be very efficient, but it is a way of doing that. So, uh, pretty much if you've got a very old one, you can set it up, but it i won't be unfortunately doing any uh setups or guides for old pcs because it is not efficient and it's just a waste of time for you and for me but if there if you're a beginner and if you've got a spare computer and you can just use it for plotting but uh unfortunately it's not something that i'm gonna cover so hard drive versus ssd so hard drives you can plot with a hard drive you can plot with an ssd but the big thing is uh, uh, the speed 
calculations on hard drive is much slower because it's a mechanical drive and it's to spin to read your files it needs to move an arm to read the files as well over time it wears off and slows down especially uh, when the lubricant wears off and it's just lots of uh, things to consider whereas the uh, SSD is just a memory chip that wears off over time and pretty much it big difference is that if SSD dies it dies instantly hard drive it slows down gradually and you can notice that it's dying slowly so the big difference between SSDs that's what you have to look out for because that's going to do most of your work on the a computer it will be the size what size you would like for uh, plotting plotting like free plots on one terabyte you can do because the temporary files are 239 gigabytes at this point they can be maybe lower in future they've been going lower and lower the temporary files they can be changed but i'm not sure how how it may look in the future so if you're watching this video later the temporary files might be lo like smaller size so just to explain this you can run four plots on one terabyte ssd so if you think about it you're not gonna it's not efficient to run all of the plots at the same time but if you were to run four plots at the same time it will fill up the storage because your hard SSD most likely won't be able to fit all of those four plots on one drive. The alternative solution would be delaying them. They gradually fill up one by one the drive and they will never hit the maximum capacity because they are all delayed. The speed of the SSDs is actually, I mean, I mean, the transfer speed can impact the performance because if you're running multiple plots, they all read and write at the same time, and and that it will be a, a big improvement. So let's say if you've got a uh, old SSD, it will run slower than those new ones which have a, a PCIe 4. PCIe 4 is the connection that's used to connect on the motherboard. It's an M.2 connection. The PCIe is, is basically the type of connection uh, that's as well referred as for, M for SSDs, NVMe SSDs. Um, so that's something to consider, uh, but I never had my SSD my EVO 980 Pro go 7 gigabit speed. It's around 1.1 gigabit. I think I've seen the most 1.5 gigabit gigabytes. Sorry. And TD, TD, B, W is terabytes written. So terabytes written is how many, right? Basically terabytes your hard drive i mean ssd has written and that determines its uh, basically usage so if you have a manufacturer let's say SS samsung it would say five years or 1200 tbw which is terabytes written so if you go across the manufacturer's rating, you have no warranty because it's five years of the rating. Of course, I did see some users that have said they had a rating of 1,500 for their SSD, but they are at 5,000 writes, you know, terabytes, and it's still going fine. But it varies from a manufacturer to manufacturer. So the biggest thing you're gonna notice when you're running multiple things, it's IOPS. Um, but what are IOPS? I might say that wrong, but I think, let's have a look. Let's have a look. I think it's input operations per second. Input IOPS. Just to get uh, input output operations per second. So when you have SSDs here, for example, you've got Samsung. I took this uh, from a Samsung website. 
1 terabyte IOPS, uh, 1 terabyte Samsung 980 Pro has 1 million IOPS. 250 has 600,000 IOPS. The input output operations per second. Okay. So the, basically, if you're transferring lots of things at the same time, or, and Windows is using as well, uh, doing things in the background, doing all those little operations, transfers, calculations. This is all as well taken into considerations. So that's what technically makes the hard drive less efficient than SSD because this makes it superior to make calculations. But if you, you compare another SSD, for example, this is a two terabyte Western Digital, which is WD, 2 terabyte SSD. As you can see, it does only 560 write, read and 530 writes. And the IOPS on here, which is interact, uh, input output per second, is only 95, which is like 10 times slower than the Samsung. It's, of course, each manufacturer has different uh, specification, you see. And another thing that you have to take under consideration when you buy the cheaper SSD, they have lower uh, endurance, which is the terabyte written 500 versus Samsung has over here 1200 or, or five years. So you pretty much get much double from Samsung, and pretty much the Samsung SSDs are double the price. But you get twice, maybe even ten times more efficient drive for you know for double the price. But the, the, you will be limited to two terabytes, whereas here you've got two terabytes. So it's really hard to calculate uh, how many IOPS your um, SSD is using. Uh, something that I can't tell you guys uh, what to you know is. It, all of them are important. There's not just one single thing that's important. See, but I, this thing I can't measure. Uh, I can't tell you because I don't have that experience. So, what else impacts the SSD performance is the version that is. You have like a solid state drive that look like a small hard drive. So they are SATA uh, drives, and they only do the same speed as the Western Digital, around 500 read, 500 write. The Samsung ones, uh, the two terabytes, they have as well good endurance, but they will be much slower. You see, when you Google uh, PCIe uh, transfer speed 3.0, we have 3000 megabytes speed read and write, and the SATA will have 500. So the SATA is very slow. Uh, so it's not very efficient. It's good for your drives uh, to put your external hard, I mean internal hard drives. I'm using in external hard drives because I don't have a big enough case. So what hard drives to buy? You can buy a, a external hard drives, USB. You can then you get a USB hub and connect all of your external hard drives. You can uh, as well connect external SSDs. Of course, they won't be as efficient as those M on M.2, but if you've got only those, just stick around with those. I did make a video about uh, gigabyte uh, in how much it costs per gigabyte on another video, so check that out in um, on my channel. There is a video that explains what to look for, how not to overpay. I normally look around uh, 20 pounds per uh, terabyte, but in your currency might be a bit different. You can share what bargains you've got on the video. So what processor do you need? Well, the processor, you just basically will need any processor. You can do dual core, quad core, six core, hexacore, Xeon processors. The only problem is if when you have a really old PC and slow processor, don't have high hopes for amazing performance but it will still do the job. So that's what you have to think about. Uh, wherever you want just to get the job done, or do you want to have a most efficient machine that you can get? 
So there are two things, you know, it really depends on your budget, how, and just don't go crazy with it. So you can go with any processor. But for on my recommendation, I'm going to cover this point shortly and just wait until then. So I'm going to talk about the AMD and over into advantage. So you will notice that the memory, so the memory on AMD is much better than it's in Intel. When it comes to Ryzen processors, I specifically targeted a Ryzen processor. Reason for that, if you go, we go to, let's say, I have a Ryzen 5 3600. We go on Google, Ryzen 5 3600, okay? And what we will see, uh, X, that's what we want, specification. You've got here, base clock 3.6 gigahertz, max boost up to 4.2 gigahertz, total cache, three megabyte, 32 cache. So it has in total, it has good number of, of amount of cache. So up L3 cache 32. If we went to, let's say, i9-990K, okay? This is a powerful processor, i9, you would expect great things from it. But it has only 16 megabyte cache. Even though it's a super expensive CPU, it has only 16 cache. So let's say we do i9 11th gen, let's say, whatever. That one has, we just go into, into website cache, 16 megabytes. That's the latest one. The only problem with Intel, from 2nd to 7th generation, they've been just selling the same thing. If you look even at, let's say, i5-2400 versus i7-7400, okay? Or let's say I, I do i7-2600, okay? I compare the i5s. Anyway, anyway, i5-26... Oh, this is i7 doesn't matter do you see any difference because i i don't see zero percent apparently there's a few percent this is five years worth of difference apparently there is a bigger difference over the years yes there's a newer technology the wattage is different and etc the, the processor behaves differently but the performance wise there is a big difference, which is none. I mean, there's just no difference. Uh, utilization and support might be different, but that's the only thing. You see, they they force you to buy a newer CPU because they want you to get the latest support. And if you have old one, you have a poor support, and then your computer performs worse. So that's that's the thing. Let's let's go for Ryzen nine. 5950X, that's like super expensive, 600 pounds. Or you can go for i9, which is 1000 pounds, okay? So if we go to that, uh, I don't have, I cannot even afford this. So this one has 64 megabyte cache. So this has four times more than Intel. And Intel has been selling the same thing over and over. That's the superior. You're gonna be probably asking what is cache. So if we're gonna go cache, YouTube video. We're gonna do a little educational video. Cache memory. Okay. So on here, what is cache? Oh, we don't want adverts. If you don't want adverts, just go on Brave and you won't get any adverts. Oh, I've got lots of stuff on here. I've been uh, flashing my uh, tablet. Just trying to change the system. Developed. Anyway, so we're not here. I think this is the video. I'm not sure if it's gonna to be too loud. I'm just gonna use the volume. The CPU cache is the CPU's internal memory, and its job is to store copies of data and instructions from RAM that's waiting to be used by the CPU. So basically what the CPU cache does is that it holds common data that it thinks the CPU is going to access over and over again. Because when I'm not gonna go into this uh, into depth, but you just heard it. 
It store the more information it can store, the faster access it has. Because from RAM it, directly, it would take much slower. So that's why it stores it in cache. Then if we go into the course. The course as well matter, so how many tasks you can perform and the threads, uh, so the logical processors are the threads. So if you think about lanes, you have six lanes and then those each lane has two outputs. That way you can take on more load and output more uh, information. And also each lane can hold more information thanks to more cache. And the clock speed is like the, at the rate it's working, okay? So the higher the clock speed, the faster as well. So the generation we already covered uh, a little bit, but any Ryzen processor would be very good. Intel's are okay, but they're not the best at doing the plotting uh, because they lack the cache memory. You see, we looked at i9, which is 11th generation, and that CPU costs around 400. Yeah, it's basically so much money that if you've got Xeon processors, Xeon processors, the server processors, and they tend to have more cache, they tend to have more cores, so they're quite good. They are for servers. Uh, I would not recommend you to be a Xeon uh, motherboard and processor because. It is gone, there's a lot of difference, like uh, you need to have a different RAM, you need to have a, a different board. So uh, there's a lot of things to consider when uh, making a server purchases rather than a home use computer. So how do you check how many threads do you have? So this one I kind of showed uh, before. Uh, you have to go to the task manager. So you go to sh control shift escape. And that brings up the task manager. You go to performance, and that shows you all of those logical cores with, I mean, with the actual cores, so the processors. So it's a six cores, 12 threads. So basically, if you have 12 threads, okay, divided by two, which is six, okay. So if you have 24, divided by 2 it's 12 if you have 8 divided by 2 it's 4 that means that many plots you can run okay that's how many plots your uh, cpu can handle okay the reason why i put seven plots on my uh on my ryzen 5 3600 because i want to squeeze in one more uh plot into the workload i want to basically use up all of my ssd i know that i can even add even more but the problem is my cpu is not gonna keep up uh if i put more than eight my ssd is not gonna keep up so you have to calculate how much it uh your C ssd can take your SSD that will hold the actual temporary files and that's pretty much it you just need to calculate the CPU and the SSD and what let's go next so how much RAM do you need RAM, RAM wise you need about for three or four plots you need 16 gigabytes that's with minimum settings with default RAM if you want to run seven plots, you need 32 gigabytes. If you want to run more than that, you need 64. If you want to have a full settings, like 4,000, no, 7,000 MIB, which is megabytes, but a bit differently calculated in that uh, Chia because it's not megabytes, but it's MIB. I don't remember what it stands for. Let's have a look. MIB. MIB. Uh, it's not even the so it's actually maybe byte pretty much it so you can put seven thousand maybe bytes 
and that will be assigned to the plot. RAM speed does matter, so if you think about it, how the cache memory and the uh, clock speed of the processor works, same will apply to the memory. So the faster the memory, the faster the processor gets the uh, information and saves it to cache, the faster your SSD as well um, has access to save this information in memory. It's a lot of thing going on, uh, but yes, the faster you have it, the, the better. I think around 3200 uh, megahertz is good. Uh, if you have 2100, which is 2133, don't beat yourself over it. Just at least you have RAM because the price is going to go up potentially as well with RAM. Installing Chi Hour. So, this is what I'm going to do cover it. Uh, so, first of all, let's go to my parsec so this is the software that i use to remotely access my computer and this is my mining uh, rig and i'm gonna uninstall chia first of all because i want to show you actually not in uninstall i'm gonna just install it because i don't want to reload my keys so let's go google chia it's not gonna, yeah chia net .net, what you need to access pretty much and you go install chia blockchain windows if you've got mac ubuntu then you need to follow the same steps chia blockchain and it starts downloading i already have this file downloaded and my internet is a bit slow so you download this file I'm not running a bit older version, so just bear in mind that if there are new features about like plotting, uh, I might have have not seen it, so just bear that in mind. So this is what's gonna happen, and it's gonna start uh, installing Python for you in the background, uh, and pretty much connects to the wallet because I already have a wallet. But when you set, launch the application first time. Yeah, so you create a new private key and uh, we'll have random words. You have to write them down and save them, keep them safe, because if you lose them, you will never be able to access your wallet unless you save your private key. But you actually want to save these words, okay? Once you save them, then you will go next and I will create the wallet. And that's pretty much it. Status is not synchronized so that means uh, the blockchain hasn't been updated on your computer in order to make transactions you need to have this synchronized as well if you want to start farming chia you need this to be synchronized it's best if you download the latest version if you have issues alternatively uh, go uh, message them on github so this is the github and under issues you can post the issues that you're currently experiencing and they can look into this for you wallets wise so this is the wallet uh, and so you can see your balance here uh, how much you have pending and create a new transaction that's pretty much it with plots this is where you add your plots farm this is uh how much time you're gonna have so you're gonna see this if i alt tab in my main one this is how much you're gonna how you're gonna see it uh and trade you can trade chia but i it hasn't been actually uh developed yet fully i think it will start working once the chia gets released on exchanges and keys okay so that's pretty much it for just a quick rundown of what happens to I mean, after you install it, like, what are the options? Uh, afterwards, uh, uh, what we are at? So we are at uh, getting Chia through wallet versus pool. So on Chia, you have a chance of getting estimate winnings. So that's two months I have. If you, I had it on a pool, the estimate could be every hour, but that would be for the entire pool uh on also on the pool you would get your cut so if the pool is lucky enough to get the 
reward it will be shared across all of the users on a network that are connected to the pool and you so that's the good benefit you will constantly get updated whereas with the wallet at the moment that's what we have to use for now because the pools are not available yet uh you can get unlucky so for example if i have 10 days it's, the estimate could say 10 days but it says here it can take three four times longer than the estimate so i could be waiting a month and not get anything even though it says 10 days but it could be that i get 10 chia in a row in 10 days but some people got it even if it said a year so and they had only three plots it's just luck that's all it is just luck that you're uh like for example here that my plot passes through a filter and then if it has any proof found and there's potential that i get chia so that's pretty much it explaining that um Okay, next through so setting up the plotting we're gonna uh, explain the plotting as well i mean uh, plotting is uh, pretty much a verification of your resources uh so allocates the space on a temporary drive and then creates a plot of space which you can actually uh, transfer because it is, it's kind of as well to prevent, uh, you know, believe to run on servers like uh, over cloud. I'm not exactly sure what's the purpose of uh, you running it for a period of time, but it's probably hashing it and calculating the uh, base and assigning it to your wallet specifically because many people have asked can i use the pl uh, the plot on a different computer uh or that has different wallet you can't so you have to replot everything so when you add the plot uh let's have a look when you add the plot what we're gonna do let's say you have one terabyte ssd you have you like I did calculation wise, you need the calculator and the terabyte SSD has 910 gigabytes, 920 gigabytes. It varies from a manufacturer to a manufacturer. So the capacity required here, it says temporary space. It could be 900, it will be 956 or after you add it all up. So four times two, three, nine, 956 minus 910 that you have is 46 gigabytes short there is two ways you can go around this you can select in the temporary space for your drive of course i don't have a, a big enough ssd here but it's an example you select the first drive and you can select the second temporary drive which will be used just in case if you uh, run out of space so you could uh, do a second ssd you can have two SSDs, for example. So, uh, going forward, the way I set it up, depending on your RAM, so if you're running one terabyte SSD, you wanna do three plots, okay? There is a, there is a guy on comments that has mentioned the, that you start the first plot, okay? Just by itself, okay? Then you uh, add the if you have 16 gigabytes, leave it default. If you have 32 gigabytes, do 4,000. If you have 64 gigabytes, maybe put it like 7,000, but do the math first, okay? So depending on how many plots you're gonna run, that's the big uh, thing. So let's say you run seven plots, that I means 7,000. That's 49 gigabytes. You can easily run that. But I give you an example here. Uh, the RAM usage, Windows itself by default uses 3.8 gigabytes. I'm not even using any chia so, uh, my plotting. So the available is four gigabytes. So I can only run one plot. Windows by itself uses up the resources. So uh, you have actually less than expected. You think, oh, I have 32 gigabytes. I can squeeze in, you know, for you know more ram yeah but then you notice that it crashes 
and uh, the, it doesn't plot. So if you have only 16, just take a little default. If you have more, if you have 32, you can put 4,000. That's why I run it at. If you have more than that, just do do quick math, uh, in like I did, how many plots you run, how much RAM you have, how much RAM you're currently using, and will it, you know, just in case, let's say all of them run at once uh, at the same point, and but, but you don't really want to do that. But anyway, if they run at the same time, how much would it be the peak, you know, resource consumption? And that's pretty much it. Just preventing. You just do your own calculation. Threads. So we just put the maximum uh, for which is the logical processors that you have in your task managers. Here I have only four because it's a, a weaker processor. And you can see it only out uh, six megabyte cache on the sixth generation. Probably the same as the second generation. Anyway. So let's say if I had a Ryzen processor, it will be 12. If uh, you have, let's say, a Ryzen 9, it will be 24. If you have an Intel, which has 16 cores, 32 threads, then it will be 32. If you have 8 core and you have 16 threads, then it will be 16. The only difference is when you have 4 cores and 4 threads, you see, there is no more. Is, you normally would expect that would be here, 8. So what you would have to put is 4. You don't put 8. And another problematic thing is that these CPUs that have 4 and 4 or 8 and 8 or 6 and 6, imagine they have only one lane, one lane in, one lane out. So they are less efficient. So it would be, you can only run two plots on these. That's pretty much it uh, for threading uh, on the plots. So I would put a four because that's the maximum on this processor. On my other, I run 12 because I, run, I have 12. Bitfield uh, plotting is only used if you're running, let's say, plotting on a hard drive uh, or if you have a old, uh, let's say, op old. CPU, old CPU, old computer, uh, and the struggles. I reuse more RAM. That's what you have to remember. We will ask for more RAM. But if you let's say have you do fifteen thousand RAM, the application will assign more RAM to the plot. So let's say the application is the at the most one plot will use six that. 6750 which is 6.7 gigabytes okay but you assign 15 uh thousand okay which is around 15 gigabytes the application it won't actually assign 15 gigabytes but it will round it up to like eight or nine or ten and then you when you start running all multiple plots it will notice that the RAM has already been allocated. There is no free RAM, even though it's not the application is not using it for that particular plot. It still has it saved, and you run out of. Even though it's just available RAM, it's not actually available. It's locked for these plots. Uh, so that's why I run into issues when I run. I was testing around 3200 just for fun. So bitfield plotting it has explanation quickly i'm not gonna go into detail but it explains what it is it's mainly for all the uh, computers and uh yeah a bitfield when you table bitfield you will write more so it's not recommended for uh ssds because it will wear out your ssds more quickly uh, and exclude final directory means that when you create a plot, this final directory will be excluded, so it won't start farming. You'd actually pretty much never want to disable that. So, uh, okay, so let's when let's say you want to create uh, a queue for three plots. So, you, uh, for, for four plots. So you start to one off. That's what was the YouTube and uh, one of the YouTube comments recommendation. You let this plot run to 31%. Okay. 31%. And then once you have 
run it to 31 percent okay then you add another queue so you go again to the same setting you select free parallel in plot delay well the delay we will cover shortly normally is around 90 uh, minutes uh, it can be longer it depends on your uh, plotting speed so let's say four and that's pretty much it so that one will be at 31 percent these two these will run in parallel so eventually you have four at the same time but uh, the way i do it is simple i add a plot three parallel there is no queue when you uh, do those parallel uh, leave as default because this is weak for your cpu for your computer might you might want to add more like, like i said if you have 32 gigabytes i select the ssd uh which will be your N nvme drive or your ssd or your hard drive that you're gonna use for plotting you can select a backup if you see when they are spaced out the uh, plots they don't use the resources at the same time of course i have it all piled up here but example they don't use all of the ssd you see it's a 933 Oh, this is half of it being used they're not they're not gonna use it all at once so uh so you can actually put four in uh i mean you can not put in four but you can have four running at the same time uh going over to next we covered this and then final direction this is the most important part this is, can save you 20 minutes of your time so you select external hard drive like i have on my here uh, external or internal so let's say free we do parallel this is what my i do i first do the parallel plots i set them up 4000 on my desktop i'm gonna close uh, the parsec now we've done uh, the installation basic setup so i'm gonna close this off and focus on this uh, window so this is my main computer you can see the usage and that's uh, with five plots seven plots running i've got quite a few in the phase one unfortunately that's i added them by accident and i didn't space it out properly uh, anyway so once we go into the plots we add a plot arrow three you want to add three in parallel delay delay will be phase one plus phase two times two so i show you on here if you have been plotting before with multiple plots you can go to your c okay users user and then it will be dot chia the user is actually your user account name i have it as user so chia mainnet uh plotter and this is all of the files so the, the tool free is the finished product and those i keep on writing okay so you can see it just changed so let's look at this one of those finished products and uh this one was using 12 threads so very soon here it says ten thousand. Uh, let's calculate that that plus phase two so these two so it says time for phase two time for phase one and that's what you want to essentially add up so you add these two numbers that's your two phases result it might take a few hours before you get this so run for example two plots in parallel or three plots in parallel depending on your cpu you have two cores like i said calculate how many you can run i can technically run on this computer six but i am squeezing in one more and you can see what's happening it's running at 100 percent, but it's not all the time uh, i have to optimize the delay because that's why that's the problem phase one all of them use cpu and everything starts to slow down if you have it 
all delayed nice and evenly then it won't happen as you can see the biggest bottleneck is the uh, cpu so what were we at so these are the numbers okay uh, you can find these numbers either in the files or in the logs themselves on the chia uh, when you have the plots running so normally you would get those two results around 32 percent that's what you need to look out for once it gets to 32 33 percent you will see those tables being created and uh, time for phase two will be played okay and then it will start, say starting phase three that's where you can just take this number okay so i've got this number here that's in seconds we divide by 60 that's 272 uh, divided by 60 again that's four and a half hours okay so for two phases uh and then times that by two which is nine hours so i do in nine hours uh each plot uh, i mean do seven plots in nine hours technically because this is just estimate of two uh, phases so let's see how accurate my estimate was okay i i um i want to check so we had this plus that so it was nine hours estimate and then we go to phase three that finishes around the end of this which is at 98 percent uh uh, final phase that's for phase you see this is phase four but we will get into that later phase three 30,000 very close to what I was expecting uh, divided by 60 divided by 60 that's nine hours so it, it was like I said very very accurate estimation uh and then divided by number of plots that i want to run within those nine hours so you want to actually run let's say if you've got two terabyte two terabyte you want to run seven plots because you want to maximize the efficiency but remember if you have quad core processor and eight threads you can only run four plots you can't run all of them seven or eight so just you need to understand as much as you want to it won't happen so uh, what you need to do you need to upgrade your processor uh, so where's my calculator so you've got the calculator out you saw the results it was nine hours but the delay i have done on in 10 hours so Let's say we do the delay in nine hours. I want to run seven plots divided by seven. It's uh, one point two eight five seven. Okay, so this is an hour. So it's one hour and roughly thirty minutes. Not thirty minutes. Around like twenty five minutes or twenty minutes. The times are by sixty. This is your delay. Seventy seven minutes. So the time of completion divided by the number of plots times that by 60 so you get it from hours to minutes and that's your uh, minutes delay and that's pretty much it that's how you i calculate my delay if you want to just keep it simple you do delay 85 where i can give you another example if it works on here so this is my another computer that runs i7 uh this is eight megabyte cache i7 four cores eight logical threads so you've got plots here as you can see it's running four plots uh so that's how much it's capable of and if you go to phase one the completion time let's have a look uh hmm. this is the phase one around the same time which is uh good but the usage of the CPU is much lower. Pretty much. And 
it really depends uh, on the, as well on this SSD because this one is running a different SSD. You have a very good SSD um, on this A60 and so it's external USB that does the plotting. Pretty much it does not only ties down to hard drive but SSD because it, if you think about it phase one is up to 31%. And after that, it is all dependent on your memory, memory speed, and your SSD. That's it. Uh, there's only one uh, core used at later stage. So you will notice that these tables use 82%, which is one core. They don't even use full performance. Going back to where we were. Uh, yes. So, don't be... Three plots, RRL, 77 delay. Leave a default if you have 16 gigs of RAM. Increase it if you'd like to. It's not necessary. The most the plots will use is 6750. But I just go a little bit over. That's if you have good size amount of RAM. Okay. If you want me to post i will try to reply to you guys with uh depending on like if you have questions oh i don't know how much i can do that things wise can you help me I, I can try to help you out but uh it may take me a while to respond so this the final destination that's what we're covering like for the second time if you save this to a hard drive i will show you what will happen okay so let's imagine let's just imagine this is the plotter, okay? This is the plotter uh, that has plots, okay? This is the uh, hard drive. Let's say we're sending a plotter, the, the program is sending a plot that's complete, okay? It's sending a complete plot. And how much would it take? It would take 13 minutes, but you saw that in phase four, my logs it was showing around 20 minutes okay and especially when you're running multiple ones it can delay even further that's what you want to prevent so when you have a ssd for example let's say i want to transfer of course this ssd is very slow but let's say i want to transfer a game which is i uninstalled the game Let's have a look. Something fairly good sized. Let's have a look. My downloads empty. Let's say I wanted to transfer the copy of my user folder. How much would it? That's it's quite good size, and it's lots of small files, so. There's 10 gigabytes. Let's say the 10 gigabytes should take me one minute 30 because, uh, because it's less than 100. And plus there's lots of small files. I'm gonna create a temporary folder. And you will see the speed of this. There's loads of files, so the speed will vary. Oof. I accidentally selected the wrong thing because Application data is a pain. Copy over. Don't want to copy that over. Anyway, let's try that again. Attempt number two. New folder. And copy that over. You can see that's transferring 45 seconds. It doesn't give it justice. It's not. It doesn't give it justice because there are so many small files. What I could do is make a copy of those. I can't really compare because I don't have another NVMe. What I'm gonna do is the crystal disk. Not, not info, but crystal disk comparison. This is the program that gives you, uh, test the speed of your SSD. So let's say you test the, uh, we're testing E, because there's an SSD, test it. Quickly, one gigabyte transfer. So if you've got one gigabyte and the transfer is in megabytes, 
you're transferring five gigabytes a second. So it would take around 20 seconds to transfer 100 gigs. And let's say we do it on an external hard drive. We do it on a J and we do the same thing. J is this one, eight terabyte drive. And we do calculation how much it would take us to transfer. It takes some time because it needs to turn on the drive and load this temporary file. It's 198. So this is best case scenario, of course, 198. So 198. Oh, this is one, one gigabyte, 10 gigabytes, 1000 gigabyte divided by 198. This 505. Uh, seconds divided by 60 around eight minutes but this is just the best case scenario you saw how much it was taking it was like saying 12 minutes 150 this is you per plot if you calculate it seven plots if let's say you can shave off 15 minutes 15 minutes times seven that's 105 minutes divided by 60 so you know you had nine hours nine hours minus 1.75 I could do it in five hours, or even if I do, you know, divide it by, I'm mean, delete that 15 seconds. Either way, this just gonna cut so much time each time. So that's why you want to select an SSD as your saving. You want to do a different one. So if you can have a second SSD, that would be best because the transfer will be faster. And then in your free time, when you can transfer the files over onto the another drive so you could if you have another one terabyte or two terabyte drive if you have only external just stick with external just, uh, it just like i said don't overspend uh on this these things so i did talk about cores and cache and ut so utilization is the in task manager uh utilization in task manager I was still gonna talk about setting it up, but I'm going off topic too much because this is uh, actually my uh, <laughs> uh, plan, and I just went uh, over a bit of the plotting, and I'm supposed to go over the plotting here. So the you can, utilization you can see is at hundred percent. That's usage hundred percent. It's not great, but it's okay. Uh, uh, sh I've got too many things running in phase one. If I had this running two two threads, okay, if the plots were running at two threads, uh, let's say three plots, you can try it yourself now. Two plots at two threads, and then two plots at full threads, so all of your threads, or do three plots. You will see a massive difference in CPU usage. Utilization is how much your CPU is used and how much. You know, because em there's empty spaces, that's the time wasted, pretty much. Time wasted because it hasn't done anything during that time. Uh, it hasn't utilized the CPU. Life expectancy, I already talked about the SSDs. They can last longer, around 5,000 even uh, writes of terabytes, but it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. Hard drive, typically between three to five years, but because you're going to put it at heavy load if plotting, then... Uh, it can shorten its life, but I can't tell you exactly how long you're gonna uh, be able to use the hard drive for plotting. When it comes for storing and farming, uh, you can see that none of the drive I use, sometimes um, the network uses to verify those plots. But that's pretty much it. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna be used, so they can last you so long that you won't even imagine maybe even 10 years. Because they're not even used that often. They just, just a little bit reads, writes, that's it. So phase one is the where the most of the CPU pro pro processing is done. Two, three, and four, that's where your SSD and uh, uh, RAM comes into play. That's where that would depend the speed on. It's, uh, my setup is good, but not the best. If you have a better setup, then you can as well take advantage of these. If you have a lot of RAM, adding more RAM give you as well benefit. So setting up the plotting settings, that's what I'm going to do. I already talked about saving the plots onto the SSD. Okay, save you 15 minutes of your time. Uh, so 
let's do RAM. RAM we don't. So in on just I have 32 gigabytes. I can even do up to seven plots, you see. So or if you have 32 gigabytes, okay. 32 gigabytes, uh you can do like this. If you have one terabyte SSD and 32 gigabytes, think oh I can put we've got 32, I can do 7,000 times 4. Okay, so times that by 4. You can actually run it. Just remember, those 4 extra gigabytes, you know, are used by Windows. So you don't technically have 32. You have 28,000. Pretty much. Uh, just, this is just not off. We might be a little bit off, but just an estimate. So you don't have... 20, I mean 32 gigs, you have a little bit less. So that's pretty much it. So we would say we, I have one terabyte, I have lots of RAM, I can set it to 7000, but I'm not going to do that because I don't have the, uh, I'm already using the RAM. So you do three in parallel because you don't do four, you have a terabyte SSD. Uh, you set the RAM to whatever. If you have only 16, leave it as that. If you have 32, you've got plenty of space. There is no point putting more. Num maximum number of threads, what you have. Uh, if you're running it uh, off uh, hard drive, bitfield plotting could be good, but it can be just left disabled because it's only designed for old CPUs I and mean old computers. Temporary, uh, select your SSD or hard drive. I would recommend the SSD because it's much faster. And external hard drive, you could do external hard drive, but as I say, save yourself 15 minutes, install that second SSD, transfer it to the SSD, and then in your free time, just transfer it manually to your external hard drive. That's pretty much it. All you need to do is add the drive to uh, the location, man not manage war rewards, but plots, uh, where is it? Add a plot directory. So if you're gonna, let's say, you see this is a plot directory, so where the finished plots are, okay? So you might need to add, if you haven't farmed to it before, it might not be in the directory, just double check add directory. If you haven't done it, add it manually. So let's say, add a plot directory. I wanna add this external hard drive to the directory. That's where the plot's gonna be transferred to manually, okay? And then you just pre press the select plot directory. So going back to it, we were doing for one terabyte drive, plot in parallel. We let's say I've got 32 gigs of RAM, but only one terabyte SSD. Delay 77, like we calculated from the logs. So I would suggest you to uh, pr uh, do run two free plots at the same time, then see uh, maybe it's two two plots at the same time, and see what are the results, how much you get. So. Pretty much we would set the same setting right like this, but with zero delay. So you would set two plots, zero, to maximum number of threads, and let it run for two phases. You go into logs where I showed you it's in uh, D, users, user, GIA, mainnet, plotter. And that's where you're going to see those two uh, logs and uh, keep on increasing. That's where you can take it, or you can go into plus directly, uh, view log, and you can find any here, but you have to just, you know, like search for it. That's pretty much it. So uh, that's what it comes down to. And when let's, le let's create a plot. So let's say 7,000 because I have a good computer. 32 gigs, but one terabyte, 77, 12 threads, and yeah, select an SSD and SSD out. So uh, you say 15 minutes. If not, then you have to write for 15 minutes. And that's pretty much it. So you will notice uh, I don't have it done here, but I can do it just an as an exercise on another computer uh, that I start. You will see what happens. So three plots in parallel. And that's how much it will work. But you want to do 77 delay. Okay. And that's how it would work. 
you can always remember about the second temporary directory option. So that's it, it started, and then you you will notice that there is no queue. The program doesn't create a queue for those plots. There's technically just three workers, but as soon as you add another one, it will start. Example, I add 10. I leave the settings as default, but uh, normally when you add things to the queue you want to have it the same as the previous one so let's say this one has 12 threads uh, running at 7000 uh, RAM you want to do the same thing for this so it will be 7000 that uh, 12 threads uh, you don't want to add more than tw to, to then your then your processor can is capable of assigning number of threads uh, for one plot then you select the same directory blah, blah, blah. you will notice that okay and i add 10 plots and they to the queue okay so take a look another one has started because technically it does this 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 even though it's the same name this queue doesn't detect those ac uh, other plots that are queued it doesn't consider them as in the queue these two so that's the problem currently that's running. So you're going to have two plots starting off. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to overthink it. It, it would just do its job. So just once you get it set up, um, then it will run. Uh, for two terabytes, just to do uh, another quick uh, cover it up, it will be the same concept, but you're going to do six plots uh, in parallel with a delay. Six plots in parallel with a delay. Uh, this is a 77. And RAM, you set, make sure you set the same setting, same output. Uh, and again, you do the same thing again. Add to plot queue the second time one, and you select 10. Same settings. Add the same destinations. And then you once you have the queue set up you can just keep on adding things so for example i have plots here okay and they're just gonna finish up okay so i'm gonna i want to add more plots to the queue i want to add 20 i want to add 4000 okay i want to do 12 threads temporary location is gonna be my ssd okay and i'm gonna add it to as you're gonna see uh, on my pc this one is nearly filled up, so it's not going to take 20. So I'm just going to pick a random hard drive and then I put the plots here. And that's pretty much it. And that will add those plots shortly to the queue. These are all farming away. And this is all added to the queue. And once this is finished, it will move down the line and complete those ones. That's pretty much how it goes. Um, so... That was setting up as well parallel plotting. Uh, why some plots start during phase one? So that was the question. Uh, the reason why it starts in phase one because you're running multiple plots. If you think about it, there is not enough space. Uh, just like think about it. Uh, when you have 100% divided by seven, each plot should technically start every 14%. I mean, uh, run every 14%. In the space it should have like a so let's say first one is 14 percent then the second one is at 20 at 28 percent then the next one is at 42 percent then the next one is at 56 the next one and the next one and the next one that's why it is done it that way it should space it out i might have to reset this because it's uh, gone wrong my uh processor isn't very good so uh and the hard drive takes too long to write so what i'm trying to say is once it gets to 100 percent this hard drive this plot this plot once it gets to 100 percent this might be even able to keep up and slow the first one in writing they both will like slow that slow down the whole process that's why i'm getting another ssd 
once I install a second SSD, it won't be, it won't happen. That's what happens here, because they all went to 100%, and one by one, everything just started choking at the end. Instead of completing it quickly, they started choking, and they start ending up on the uh, similar percentage. And that's the benefit of two SSDs having more than two SSDs. So one you have reading, one you have writing, but why would you want more than one? Well, that's what I was talking about, input and output operations per second. Having two SSDs, they can potentially do more operations per second. So uh, that's the thing. For the RAID, you don't really want to RAID SSDs because they are like RAM. It will be slowed down to the slowest SSD. So if you have, let's say, 4000 RAM uh, speed, okay like here 3800 and i put a stick which is 2133 all my other sticks will slow down to 2133 because it is to the slowest chip same goes to the ssds with hard drives on the other hand it will sum sum up the speed so all of the hard drives let's say you have five you can actually raid them together all of the hard drives and that's that's the thing actually you could do raid them together that's what i haven't thought about raid those hard drives together but i have them on usb so i don't know if that's going to be working at all so if you raid them all, all, all together they will have good uh, reading and writing speeds because they have share the same um, data is distributed across all drives in the raid so uh, storing the plots like I recovered, store them on SSD uh, and then on the external hard drive or RAID the external hard drives or internal, depending on what you're using. And how to save time on plotting, that's what I talked about, uh, about SSDs. And that's pretty much a uh, summary. Um, that was a long journey. Thank you very much for watching. I've done everything without editing because I hate editing. And if you could please leave a like and subscribe, uh, share it to others so that they can uh, educate themselves a little bit. That's just all of the information that I have learned myself in two days only. And then I just started a YouTube channel just to help others out with their information and mining Chia. So I uh, hope this is somewhat helpful and explains uh, a lot of information for you uh, some of it might be wrong some of it might be right i mean this is right but uh, the main purpose is to inform you and uh, so you're not confused on what's happening uh, that's pretty much it i'm just here to help others out and uh, hopefully you know grow my channel and we can move it to different cryptocurrency or stick with chia i don't know where this channel is gonna take away but uh thank you very much for your support and i'm loving the comments um if you have any issues or you need me to uh help you set up the plot uh and settings for your specific uh, uh what's it called specific computer set setup then let us know down there below as well, feel free, guys, to help others out. Just let them know. You watch the video, you probably know as well as much as I do uh, about how to set up, you know, threads-wise, how many plots you can run based on threads divided by two. You have 32 gigs of RAM. You have four plots. You can just, you know, use as much as RAM as you want. And that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Uh, uh, have a great evening and see you next time.